that I called a play for Thielen, and then I realized he was out, and I didn't know he was out. Right, I didn't know he was out fast enough. It was a play that could only go to Thielen, so I had to change the call. And we ended up. That was the one we had to call a timeout on. So that was that was. Yo, what it is, YouTube? It's the Real Ball Watcher. And first video, I know, I get it. Something near and dear to my heart. Central location and the main cause of all my depression. We're talking about the Carolina Panthers, baby. I know. Panthers fan, J.C. Horn on the jersey. Showing, his, showing up in his first video talking about the Panthers. Ironic. I get it. The whole YouTube video or the whole YouTube page won't be about this, I promise. We'll talk about other things, other All-22, all that. But today... Panthers fans, we've talked about it all week on Twitter. It's time to bring Mitch McConnell to the stand. Now, if you see my eyes looking away from the screen, I apologize. I am trying to look at all the charts I have up, all the film I have up, and, you know, just to keep me on pace. But um, so the first thing I want to talk about is the lack of creativity in his play calling. Or actually, let's go ahead and start out with the lack of explosive plays. So I'm I'm gonna put up I'm gonna put up some charts. I'm gonna put up Matt Ryan charts from last year, specifically from only games that Frank Reich was um, coaching him. I'm gonna put up those charts, and I'm gonna put up some of Bryce Young's charts or all three of Bryce Young's charts from this year. And what you're gonna notice is there is a very very sparse amount of circles, green or white in the deeper part of the field for either of these guys. Now, I don't know if that's by design. I don't know if both of these guys were just scared to throw deep. I know Matt Ryan had the same arm that I do right now, and I dislocated my shoulder three times. So maybe that's what it is. But there is seeming to be a trend of a lack of explosive, explosive plays from a Frank Reich offense. And I think that needs to be fixed. I don't know if he's the reason or – if his controlling of the play calling is the reason, but something has to change. You see the charts. They're there. But it isn't just the charts that back that up. Let's look at the explosive plays from every from every team in the league last year. And I know he didn't coach there the whole year. Calm down. Don't kill me. Don't kill me. I know he wasn't there the whole year. I'm sorry. But we're going to talk about it. So if you look at Indianapolis, they have 77 explosive pass plays last year. That ranked in the bottom seven of the league. I'm pretty sure Panthers fans can say that we're probably ranked in the bottom of the league right now. I don't have a chart to prove it. We're only four games in. Sorry. Don't kill me. I don't make these. Anyways, um, they also ranked 31st in points per game, which I'm pretty sure the Panthers are pretty low also. I could have looked it up, but I don't feel like doing it. Somebody else do it. Anyways, okay, I know Frank Reich didn't coach uh, the Colts all last year. Shoot him some bail. Shoot Ben McConnell bail if you want. Let him freeze up. But I'm going to go back to 2021. Explosive pass rate and explosive pass plays for the Indianapolis Colts, where he had a different quarterback. I'm put the chart up on the screen where he had a big armed quarterback by the name of Carson Wentz. Cool guy, free agent right now. Maybe somebody will pick him up. I don't know. But if you look at the Indianapolis Colts, which you can see at the bottom of the chart, second to last, they had 42 explosive pass plays last year out of 550 pass plays. That is a 8% explosive pass play rate. Which, it shows on the chart that they're ranked 20th. But if you're looking at the rest of the people that are ranked up under them, right under them, it's by one or two plays. So really, they were a bottom five explosive pass play offense. That's three years in a row where Frank Reich has lacked the explosion over top that you need in an offense. I'm going to lean on the side of it has something to do with him versus the talent that he has on the field. That's just me personally. Draw your own conclusions. But if that's the case, that's strike one. Now, before I go on to the next thing, I want to also want to um, – I forgot to say this last time. I also wanted to show that other defenses are keying in on us not being able to get vertical. We heard Jesse Bates talk about it in his post-game pressure one time. We talked about other teams, you know, not really being scared of the deep ball coming down out of their deep zones, jumping routes underneath. Let's show the two interceptions that Bryce Young threw. Um, I'll talk over them. I mean, as you can see, they're in cover three in one of these. I'm not sure which one I'm going to show first. And Jesse Bates has a deep zone. Mean goes on the post. He comes down, picks it off. Actually, they might have been in cover one on that one. They're in a cover three in another one. 
Uh, Bryce Young looks to the left, goes through his reads, comes back to the backside dig, which is great processing, by the way, for a rookie, but it's not a video about him. We'll get to it a different day. And what does Jesse Bates do in his deep zone? He comes down out of deep third, jumps on a, a dig, and gets a – First interception in Bryce Young's career. So we see that teams are not respecting the deep ball. And this is the first game. So I don't know if they were using the tendencies that I mentioned earlier from the past three years of Frank Reich's offenses, but teams do not respect the deep ball. And that's also probably why we can't separate or get anything explosive over top because nobody is afraid of us. We don't have any real ball winners on the outside. I don't know what's up with DJ Chark. He tricked me. Sorry. Jonathan Mingo, he was nece- he was never necessarily a deep ball guy. He has some juice to get down there. Um, but he was always a work in progress anyway as a rookie. I was a little higher on him than most people. I haven't given up, but he's not going to win deep right now. He's not. Terrence Marshall has not gotten the opportunities to win deep. Um, I would actually like to see that, which he was good at LSU, but we can talk about that being in a play call and maybe using the wrong people in the wrong places, but we'll get to that later in the video. So maybe that's what it is, but something has to change and teams are not afraid of us going deep and it's going to continuously have them sit on shorter routes. People not getting open Bryce holding on to the ball and a terrible offense It's going to lead to terrible offense, and this is going to hurt Bryce Young's development. But now let's move on to the next thing. Now, if you follow me on Twitter, which I'm sure a couple of the people that watch this do. I'm sure all my friends that watch this know my Twitter. I don't know if y'all pay attention because y'all not Panthers fans. Y'all don't care. But if you follow me on Twitter and you're a Panthers fans, you know that I am probably the biggest Miles Sanders defender there is. I tell y'all every week, there's no holes for him to run to. Y'all mad at him for being bad when we are the 31st team ranked in pass block or run block win rate. Last time I checked, that was week three. I don't know what it was this week, but from what I've seen on the film, it isn't changing. We're probably 30 second now. But we have the worst run blocking team in the, league, uh, uh, in the league. And a lot of that is because we have two of our guys hurt. I know y'all love to say, oh, Foreman was so good last year. What happened? Well, he had two different guys in the offensive line that actually helps you know, move people out of the way and create holes. And I understand Frank Wright trying to come in and revitalize that spark that we had last year in the power running game, but we don't have the personnel to do that. Two of our offensive linemen are hurt, Brady Christensen and uh, Austin Corbett, who just came off the pup. Shout out to Austin Corbett. Um, we're running with a rookie, Chandler Zavala at left guard, who plays much better at right. And we're running Calvin Throckman at right guard. Never even heard of dude until he was here. Um, He's playing better than Zavala, though. I'll give him that, I guess. I guess that's something. But we don't have the personnel to run this power-blocking scheme where we're literally just coming out under center or under shotgun, handing the ball off, telling him to run dive, hit the backside A if he can, in the offensive alignment or just blocking the man in front of them, trying to work up to the next guy. When you don't have an offensive line that is good enough to move people and create holes in the run game like the Eagles – you have to scheme and have blocking schemes to create holes. Even the Eagles have schemes to create holes. They'll get Jason Kelsey on the move. They'll get guys moving to create creases for their running backs to run through. Let's 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 show the tape. Let's show the tape. I'm just gonna let the tape speak. Look at I'm gonna let it run a couple times. Look at these blocking schemes that we have. I'm gonna show a couple right here. As you can see, we're literally just telling guys, hey, block down, hey. Move this guy, work up double team, work up to the next guy. And we don't have the personnel that can do that. We don't have Jason Kelsey. We don't have uh, – who are some other guys on that offensive line? Cam Jurgens, does he start? I don't know if Cam Jurgens starts. Shout out Cam Jurgens. We don't have Landon Dickerson. We don't have Jordan Mailata. We don't have any of those guys right now. So we need to use the guys – the way that they're meant to be used, the way that they are good being used. Let's bring up Iki Aquanu, the guy who ran a 4 9 in the comp mind. I know that doesn't really show anything. That doesn't really show his lateral quickness or anything. But it shows, you know, he's an athlete. He can get on the move. And he excelled on the move in college. I mean, I have a couple clips. I'm putting them up right now. He excelled on the move. Why aren't we pulling Icky? Why aren't we moving Icky around? Zavala has shown that he is good laterally reaching guys. Why aren't we in a zone blocking scheme when we don't have any power rushers? We don't have any. We don't have a Dante Foreman. Why aren't we in a zone blocking scheme to move the pocket, move the offensive line, and create creases in the run game? Um, it it shows a lack of 
not cohesion. What is the word I'm looking for? A lack of competency at the head coach position. And honestly, if that is the case, which was also the case for the Colts last year, they had a, like uh, my guy, what is it, the franchise guy said, they had a lack of creativity in their blocking schemes. They're just lacking good blocking schemes in general in the Colts last year. And now the Colts' offensive line this year looks a lot better under a, a new offensive coach. So if that is the case, I'm afraid that that's strike two. Now the next thing I want to bring up is the lack of creativity in his play call. And we talked about not having any ball winners downfield or over the top. We talked about guys not being able to separate when playing man. We talked about all that. But let's look at their favorite thing to run, the bubble screen. <laughs> now we have a guy in LaVisca Chanel who's basically a running back wide receiver. He's basically Cordell Patterson, breaks tackles, gets downfield. Cool guy. I actually like LaVisca. I think we need to use him more often. But instead of this, let's show a play who we're running the bubble screen to. Now, I know that's incomplete. But Terrence Marshall, when LaVisca Chenault is on the sideline just chilling, who could actually make a move. I know it's incomplete, but do you think Terrence Marshall was going to get anywhere? Be honest with yourself. We have LaVisca Chenault, but instead we choose to run bubble screens to Terrence Marshall and out of all people, 32-year-old Adam Thielen. Clap it up, y'all. I know he's our best wide receiver right now, the highest um, rated player on PFF for our offense, but why are we running bubble screens to Adam Thielen? Can we get real? It's a reason that this guy was able to jump this screen. That's a good play by him, but I'm pretty sure he knew that was coming. I'm pretty sure they sat in the film room and said, hey, they're most likely going to run 15 screens against us. And what did the Panthers do? Run 15 screens against them. Like, can we get real? Can we get real? Frank Reich said it would be apparent when it's time to hand the play calling over. I think it is. Let's look at this screen to LaVisca. Let's look at what LaVisca does when he gets this screen. Look at him. Look. And let's look at the offensive line. When the offensive line, this goes to my earlier point, when the offensive line is on the move, the offensive line looks good. Now, I also think we're using the wrong guys on the move. We got Taylor Moten and Calvin Throckman out there. I think that's his name. It's Calvin Throckman. Now, Bradley Bozeman, I do like him on the move. I think he should be out there moving around, moving guys. But why are we using Taylor Moten and Calvin Throckman to go move guys upfield? That's not their game. Let's show the Icky clips again. Let Icky do that. Let the guys that you got, you your GM acquired, let them do their job. Not Let's not throw screens to Adam Thielen. Let's throw them to a Miles Sanders. What they did a couple times this game, let's throw them to LaVisca Chanel. Let's not throw them to Terrence Marshall. Let's not pull Taylor Moten out and get him on the move for a screen to open up for whoever, Terrence Marshall, Adam Thielen, whoever you want to say. Let's use Ikeem Aquano, who we drafted six overall two years ago, I think. Let's use Chandler Zavala, who has shown that he has a little, a, enough athleticism to get vertical and to get horizontal to reach guys. Let's use the guys that we have. With all being said, I personally think that we have Mitch McConnell at head coach. Um, I think it's time to give the plays over to Thomas Brown. I think we need to acquire a receiver that can win vertical and beat man. Even if he can't win vertical, like freaking – Tyreek Hill, he doesn't have to be amazing vertical, but at least somebody that threatens the explosive plays so we can stop having Jesse Bates <laughs> drop down out of out of deep zones and jump our dig routes, our backside digs, and making my quarterback look bad. But, you know, I think it's time to give up the play call. I think it's time to acquire another receiver, which I'm glad they're doing. But I don't know, man. What do y'all think? I think Frank Reich might have been the wrong guy. If you like the video, let me know your opinion in the comments. You feel me? Um... Like and subscribe, share for me, get get the word out. I don't know everything. I was looking at blocking schemes and uh, trying to learn some run blocking schemes that could get to, you know, our left tackle on the move and stuff like that. So I don't know everything. I'm not the quarterback school. I don't know every coverage in the book, every play, but I have played football. I study the game to this day. I'm in school for this, but and I know a little bit. So I just wanted to voice my opinion. Um, if you follow me on Twitter, it's the threads that I do of the All-22 on Tuesdays after the games are over. I'm going to start doing those in YouTube video form and posting them here, um, you know, with a little more comedy than the QB school that somebody else would do. Um, but, yeah, so like and subscribe, share, and put your binoculars back in the case because we'll see you next week.